in the tumultuous summer of 2020 during a racial protest in the town of Birmingham, Alabama, a Confederate monument was overturned. Protesters discovered beneath it lie a buried manuscript entitled, The Book of Lucifer. The Book of Lucifer is an account of famous historical religious stories as retold by Satan, aka Lucifer Jehovahson. The volumes contained herein are highly controversial, and it is advised that the weak at heart steer clear from it. Skilled literary professor, Lord Cain de Wilt, will read excerpts while also including interviews and testimonies of people whose lives have been forever changed by this book. Let us begin with the story of Noah's Ark, or as Lucifer calls it, God's favorite senior citizen. Should one decide to follow my father, one will quickly discover that Jesus, the deceptuous triplesaurus malignancy. Oh yes indeed, madam, he lied to you. Jesus would rather climb a tree and tell a lie than to stand on the ground and speak the truth. I've seen it. For his deceptive yoke is neither light nor is it easy. It should be stated, dearest reader, that I did not rebel against my father, Jehovah, and risk all to fulfill some trifling vanity. No, I knew in my heart that father was wrong, even after centuries had passed and the whole garden debacle had unfolded. I saw my influence had an impact on the peoples of both earth and of heaven. I noticed that many of my brother and sister angels were coming down to earth and having intimate relations with the sons and daughters of Eve. This is a trend that I no doubt inspired. I always supposed that God, seeing my lasting influence upon his creation, realized that I had won, as it were. But it was never a game for me. I was simply glad that man was free. So naturally, God was furious and filled with regret. He went out and found one of the oldest men still alive, still managing to drag himself across the face of the earth, a 500-year-old alcoholic named Noah, God's favorite senior citizen. I remember how God frightened Noah almost unto his very death. Noah. Noah. Did somebody say something? I could have swore I heard something. I don't think somebody said so. Noah. Ah, what is it? What? Tis I, the Lord thy God. You can't be sneaking up on me like that. I'm old. Behold, the earth is full of violence, so I will destroy it in a violent flood. A flood? What, what, what that is? Yes. I've changed my mind. I will make it rain for 40 days and for 40 nights. Thus, ye must build ye an ark. A what? What's an ark? What? What is it? An ark. You know, it's like a boat. A boat? I'm gonna do it a boat. I'm gonna put you and your family on a slow-moving boat with one window and fill it up with a pair of every animal on the earth. You must build this ark. You must preach of the oncoming damnation. And you must keep all of the animals alive. Dearest reader, please bear in mind that at this time, Noah was over 500 years old. He tried to do as God asked him and warn the people of the merciful destruction that their master was sending, along with his divine plan for escape. Yet the people only mocked him. <clears throat> we are all gonna die! <laughs> We're all gonna die! <laughs> Well, listeneth, people, listeneth, listeneth to me. God cameth unto me, and he said he is tired with, of the violence and the destruction of man. So he will destroy the earth and all the inhabitants violently in a flood. The people mocked him, for his way with words was as weak as the wrist of Jesus. He lied. I heard this story in a bar in Mesopotamia. He stole it from the Epic of Gilgamesh. <laughs> and shutteth up, do not mocketh me. Cometh with me, and joineth me, and the animals on the boat with one window. The people mocked Noah. They did not believe that because two people disobeyed God, he was about to hold everyone accountable. But that is exactly the Jehovah that I know. 
and I am convinced his absence of compassion fostered the growth of my own. You are a foolish old man. Thy brain has obviously gone rot from time. I don't believe you. I don't think the guys are gonna destroy the Earth. Not after they work so hard to make it. <laughs> if you believe the scriptures, they tell you that it had never rained a single drop of rain before that time. That isn't true. When the planet began to cool, it formed clouds. These clouds literally rained the ocean. I wish you could have seen it, it was beautiful. But Jehovah and his Jedi mind tricks, as you already know, endureth forever. Fine then. Fine, I'm sick and tired of y'all. Fine, no salvation for you, and no salvation for you, none for you back there, none for y'all over there. Curse your kids, curse your wives, and curse your husbands. Cause God's drowning everybody out here really soon. I'm talking about very, very soon. It would take almost a span of 100 years to finish the boat and then collect all of the animals. A very lengthy process indeed. Real soon, like in the twinkling of an eye. Next, the story goes that an exact pair of each animal on Earth arrives specifically on cue at Noah's home in the Middle East. If you can suspend your disbelief long enough to believe it, some beasts, such as the kangaroo, were forced to cross miles of ocean. Some creatures, such as the penguin, were made to cross thousands and thousands of miles of frozen tundra and forge a path into the hot, howling desert. Some scientists suggest, some Christian scientists suggest, that some of the dinosaurs had to evolve quickly into smaller animals just so they could fit on the ark. And we all know it to be true because it is the infallible word of God. Are you being sarcastic? I don't know. Are you being sadistic? Anyway, all of the animals magically loaded upon the boat with one window to reference God's intelligent design, or lack thereof. What do pandas eat? Do gorillas require exercise? Ham, you idiot! Separate them predator and prey animals! Oh my god. Sham! Sham! I need you to get a lot of shovels, cause we gotta remove all of the animal waste out of that one window. Uh -huh. Jacob, I've been meaning to ask you about this dolphin. Uh, he confusing me. It's a mammal, and he breathes out. So do we let him come on the boat, or we just let him swim on the side of the boat? I'm not really sure what we're doing. So as the very last animal, a turtle, loaded the ark, now 600-year-old Noah and his family, his wife, and his three suspiciously young sons, and their three wives, who may be the three most important women in history, but no record is kept on them because, you know, men. And they all boarded up upon the ark. And then it began to rain. The rain began to fall, and the people begged Noah to be put on board. God closed the door to the ark in their faces, and he said, Behold, which also translates into, Look here, mankind and I shall break up, so in thus that we shall make up.
Jehovah's wrath found the blind, the deaf, sweet little old grandmothers, tiny furry puppies, innocent babbling babies, the sick, all the lonely widows, blacks, whites, Asians, Hispanics, kings, queens, beggars, soldiers, virgins, virgin soldiers, and God killed everybody's little sister, and then he killed everybody. Everyone that anybody ever loved died. So his mercy may endureth forever, madam, but it didn't start until long after the flood. Can you imagine listening to the screams of every human on the planet drowning in terror? Hm. It was no sweat off my father's back. I would like to take this opportunity to point out something. Who makes a paradise and then drowns it, then promises to one day burn that very same paradise? Someone drunk with power. Many faiths overlook just how cruel and evil God was at this time. God was setting the stage for what would later become the patriarchy. You do what old men tell you to do or you die. God did not shed a tear. But when Jesus, the greasy, self-glorious scum, who knew he was going to die when he came to earth, came down basically to commit suicide, God wept then, and God turned his back then to cry then. To God, the death of one is a tragedy, while the death of millions is just a statistic. So as the rainwater mixed with the salt water of the ocean for 40 days and 40 nights, it killed off all of the marine life. Noah, his family, and the animals on the ark, however, were safe. Noah was only able to fit 1% of all the animals on the ark, which is why scientists say 99% of the animals that have ever lived on Earth are now extinct. I didn't want to come, mommy. Then God, who had been so very vocal with Noah during the construction of the ark, fell silent. <clears throat> <laughs> so Noah was forced to release several birds to test for dry land. Eventually the ark came to rest upon a mountain and the waters began to recede. So the animals all left the ark and returned to their homes, once again crossing massive oceans, deserts and frozen tundra to pick up right where they left off. Having destroyed every community in the world and also destroying society, God was now pleased. This is what I'm talking about. Then God finally broke his silence and spoke unto Noah. 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 Oh, did somebody hear something? Did anybody say something? Noah. Noah. Ah, yes, Lord. I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. I'm just an insignificant alcoholic. Please, I'm old. I'm so old when I poop, dust come out. Please, ah. Sacrifice those animals to me at once. Sacrifice? You mean after all of this killing, you still want stuff to die? I need more subjects. Um, well, you just killed everybody, so, uh... I command thy family to know itself and multiply. I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't know what you mean by that, God. Tell your family to have sex, but I want them to keep it in the family. Oh, that, oh... And you have been commanded to believe that that is where all humans came from. Incestuous, ancestral, senior citizens. Try saying that five times fast. Well, you either believe that or you believe that all humans evolved from apes in Africa. I shall let you decide. What I pulled away from the story is how so few people actually know God when there are testaments to his toxic, narcissistic behavior literally littering his own book. I ask you, would you have killed every human? Would you have slain every beast? Would you have spared only one family? If you answered no to any of these questions, then I propose that you are indeed more ethical than God himself. <laughs> <laughs>